the second series of absolute dating problems in the Unit 3 lab on geologic dating. The first thing that we need to do with this section is to calculate the decay constant. Now, just again, there's a little bit of background. We're going to be using the same minerals and the same materials from the first absolute dating exercises. However, this time we're just using a slightly different equation to show you a more mathematical rather than graphical way of calculating ages. So to get started with that, we have to first calculate the decay constant for each radiometric isotope. What that means is that we're using the isotopic systems uranium-238, uranium-235, potassium-40, and carbon-14. These systems each decay at different rates. The decay constant helps kind of establish what that rate is. It's not exactly a rate, but we can think about it as kind of serving as a rate. So um, we're going to uh, use the equation that's provided in the upper left-hand corner. And an important part about this equation that's different from any of the calculations that we've done before is that we, when we enter in the half-life, this time we have to have the half-life in units of years not in millions of years, and that's just the way that this equation was written. All right, so again, I mentioned that each isotopic system, parent and daughter system, has their own half-life, and if we look at the equation again, you see that the decay constant and the half-life are related to each other, so as the half-life changes for a system, that means the decay constant is also going to be different. <clears throat> Again, just to show you a visual of uh, how we have to have these numbers in units of uh, years, not millions of years, for the uranium-235 system, the decay, uh, the half-life is 713 ma, which means millions of years. So we're going to have to write that out in this equation as 713000000 years. All right, so to start with this equation, again, the decay constant is defined as 0 0.693 divided by the half-life. So we'll just type that in. Like that. Divide that and you get a fairly small number. Actually, it's a very small number with a lot of zeros. And so uh, it's a little bit easier for to, to dealing with numbers like this to write them in scientific notation. So it would probably be easier to write that as 9.72 times 10 to the minus 10. Once you've figured out this decay constant, uh, you should write it here in the upper um, portion of the, that right hand column that I've extracted from your lab. Uh, and again, whenever you use uranium-238, you're always going to use this 9.72 times 10 to the minus 10 number. That is the decay constant for this isotopic system. Okay, so following along with the lab, uh, in the next part that you want to do, just to keep flowing with the way that the lab is structured, is to enter in the decay constant again for the uraninite. Um, and we're going to continue working with the example for uraninite. As we move across this chart, after we enter in the decay constant, the next quantity we need is ND over NP. And remember, that's the number of daughter atoms uh, divided by the number of parent atoms. So this is the daughter to parent ratio. And that's really easy to get because we're just going to copy that from our previous uh, exercise. Right? And uh, what we figured out with the uh, daughter to parent ratio from, uh, from our first series of calculations is that number is 0 0.695. So you really are just going to copy that over into uh, this new column uh, and this new exercise. Moving to the right, this next chart or this next step is really easy. You just take that 0 0.695 and you add 1 to it, right? So uh, that gives us 1.695. Now the next column to the right says LN or LOG equation. Um, we don't really need to fill this in because this is just a way for you to articulate to your instructors which equation you used. And that's because the lab provides you with two equations, the LN or natural log equation or the log equation. For this exercise, we just want you to do the LN equation. It's a little bit more straightforward. and. Um, that's why we don't need you to tell us which equation we uh, use, because we want you to just use the LN equation. So the next thing we need to do is find out what that LN equation is. And we're going to use uh, the equation again from your lab that is uh, 
to find here in the upper left hand corner. All right, so time uh, is equal to 1 over the decay constant times the natural log of the daughter to parent ratio plus 1. Right? So uh, I would encourage you to do this, to, to break up this, uh, um, this equation into a series of steps. And we have to be a little careful here, uh, at least with the way that I'm going to um, walk through this, because uh, depending on how your calculator works, the actual steps may be a little bit different. So just keep that in mind that, uh, that the way that I'm walking through this could be slightly different based on uh, the way that, uh, that your calculator works. Regardless, um, I think the, uh, the best way is to start with taking the natural log of the daughter to parent ratio plus 1, uh, which is the natural log of 1.695. And when you do that, you get uh, the number 0 0.523. Now, you might get a slightly different number. Uh, you could get 0 0.527 uh, is another uh, number that you get. And anywhere that has 0 0.52, you should be fine. So uh, the number in the um, uh, that last number uh, is uh, it can be slightly different based on um, how you want to read your numbers. So um, we'll just move on from there. All right. So now that you have the essentially the numerator um, of this equation, uh, all we have to do is divide by the decay constant. Right? And so um, the decay constant again is 9.72 times 10 to the minus 10. So we write that out. What you get is uh, um, 0 0.532 divided by 9.72 times 10 to the minus 3, uh, and you get 538 millions of years. Now you can put this either in years or in millions of years. Um, the MAs uh, to me is a little bit more um, easy and straightforward to work with. Uh, it's easier to see and I understand what you're looking at, so I would encourage you to put these in, in uh, units of MAs where appropriate, because they're not all going to be in, in uh, units of millions of years. At any rate, that's uh, how we walk through these problems. It will finish completing that for the, uh, the same steps for zircon, uh, for the mica samples, for the volcanic ash, and for the wood. And uh, curious to see what you come up with.